Hey, David. Good morning, Greg. How are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good, I guess. How are you? I, I'm good. My dog's barking in the background, but other than that, I'm good. <laughs> Isn't a dog barking a good sign? I mean, it means it's spring out and the snow is gone and we can move on with our lives. I, he, he barks constantly, so it's <laughs> like... It's, it must be spring all the time, even in the middle of winter. It's always spring in the middle of winter. I just made that song out. Dude, that's amazing. Um, so, yeah. uh, we are going to continue with Marlin today. We have very little news, uh, but we've got people that we probably should thank. We do. Before we thank them, do you have your phone playing the video still in the background? my phone playing the video i hear the now. youtube video going <laughs> i don't know if it's uh, me or you no i do not all right i'll figure it out on my end but yes let's thank some people i'm pushing the button right now go operation thank i want to thank these wonderful people he'll jump at the tree supports level and then everyone else on this list you guys uh make our discord exciting and a vibrant place and you make all the projects we do possible so thank you so much for everyone to join joining on the list so yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you we appreciate you um and if you want to be a patron you got go it patreon.com slash 3d make it and for all the other stuff go to 3d make it.ca and you'll find all our social stuff there the socials so oh they say they can hear everything today in the chat that's really good um we nailed it <laughs> Ooh, it, it only it only took us like what three years uh, yeah three years <laughs> four, well, four eight, three and a half or whatever since this stream is so darn good we'll see you guys later all right uh thanks for all right, we're out <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so we're gonna uh, like greg said we are gonna continue on with uh marlin one more week here i probably won't consume all of the day for uh, this <laughs> see you later Stig. um it probably won't take all day for what we have left and then we'll talk about some advanced stuff um and maybe some different board things too but we do yeah. have like a few noteworthy things um yeah, one's, they're, well like one mi mild, mildly, mildly yeah. no yeah. there, there <laughs> uh there's a a, a patched version of kira mm -hmm. 5.3.1 they patched some goofy bugs and whatnot there's no feature changes or anything like that yep. so it's not that exciting but you know it's always good to uh patch any vulnerabilities or bugs that could be impacting your printing so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we just thought we'd let you know um the second item is we're going to be at the calgary maker fair um so yes. if you're in or around the locale of yyc calgary we will be there um, I think the I forget the dates of the maker fair. I have the it's dates. Like May actually, 13th? it's the thirteenth and four. Is it thirteenth and fourteenth? Or I think it's the thirteenth. It's yeah. It's May thirteenth and fourteenth. Yeah, and so um, our plan is we, to be I, there one yeah, day. on the Saturday. I believe is yeah. when we're going to be there. So thirteenth. Um, we're most likely just going to be attending. Um, so we're, we're thinking that maybe a meetup of some kind would be cool. If mm -hmm. any of you are going to be, uh, going, um, we can probably figure out ahead of time, a place that we could meet or a time and maybe near the end of the show or something. Yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you do see us there and you're walking around and you see us there, uh, come up and say hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for punch. sure. Don't punch us though. Because we're delicate <laughs> creatures. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, we'll, we'll be there again. How we attend is a little up in the air, but we'll probably just, like Greg said, we'll probably just attend and, and hang out, have a good time because we don't want to babysit a poop. <clears throat> and so that's fair. But yeah, so in a couple weeks, we'll be up there. Um, so if you're again in Canada and you're by Calgary and you want to come hang out, we'll be up there. We'll hang out. Um, yeah, so that's that. When we said there was very little news, we weren't lying. That's, that's it. it. That's all we got. Um, I mean, 
if you guys have any newsworthy things, put them in there. But um, yeah. we're uh, we're going to continue with Marlon now. Um, this will be the last live stream with Marlon, but this is not the last thing we're doing with Marlon for the patrons. No. Um, so what's going to happen after this live stream is we're going to move into Clipper, and then we'll do Clipper probably for I don't know. It might take us uh, one live stream, two live stream, maybe. Maybe two. Uh, maybe I, I, it depends. Three. It it depends on you know how deep we go into yeah. what. And, and so and we'll do the we'll do the Clipper one right after this, just to be fair to the Clipper one. And then what what will happen is we're going to go offline and we're going to uh, uh, probably use Discord or maybe private. I haven't decided that part yet. But then we'll go into the actual Patreon. Uh, side of things and then we'll configure together um because i know this one's kind of like a high level overview and and what you should do so um yeah i know richard and tim will be there too um up in calgary it's gonna be cool to to hang out i haven't seen richard in oh goodness probably yeah, two years a few so years yeah be nice to at least say hello in person <laughs> um so last week we left off uh where we left off i'm just kidding we left off in an actual real place. We left off talking about stepper driver. Yeah, we 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 kind of went through uh, linear advance and steppers and jerk and S curve and all that stuff. And we talked briefly about some of the features of the steppers. Yeah, and then we ended off the show. Yeah. So, so this is roughly where we. So if you're following along, and this is, uh, I think, Marlin. 2.12 so if you're following along in the config uh, for 2.12 which is what we've been using we're on line 2713 <laughs> so it's important to remember that when we talk about like our stepper drivers uh these are universal things this is not printer centric right here so even though like we started off and we're ranking this new ender 3 printer as we go along uh through our configs here not not printer focused so this is more driver focused. But what I will say is on a smaller printer like Ender, there are some changes that you have to uh, affect when it comes to, uh, you'll have to, sorry, I read a comment and then I got a little silent. Dominic says, is input shaper setup better with an accelerometer uh, better than using a test print? Yes, absolutely. Anytime you can it, use it, a sensor, it's better. <laughs> it's it's di it's different you can you can do both one is more um you know your your best print first and it's your kind of per personal preference yeah on on which looks the best whereas one is is very data driven right yeah. so and it's i it's feel data -driven subjective versus you know data driven yeah they, I don't know. Anytime we can get a number out of something, it's always better than guessing, too. Like, that's the way I feel, like, even in, like, our, our work life, right? Like, if you can actually get the actual data or, or an error or whatever it is behind, you actually know the reason. But, again... You, yeah, you can get the number, but you got to measure to figure it out. Well, that's right? just it. It doesn't just auto automatically give it to you. Ooh, you have to... You um, have to what was that other of... feature? Uh, oh, man... I want to say it was linear advance when it came out. It had those the test prints too. Yeah, you well, you had to you had to print yeah. the the test print on the, the bed. We talked about that last week with the yeah. lines and then thin and fat and yeah. So and so you had to use your best judgment on on which, which looks the best. It still best. it still calibrates. You will still get a better print uh, e either way. Yeah, but, yeah, you're doing so, something so, to so, get a better print, but so so if you only run marlin this is your option yeah right <laughs> now printing printing the model yeah marlin right? doesn't have the probe so if yeah. yeah if you want the probe or the sensor you have to use clipper um I'm sorry would why are you sorry i bumped my microphone oh i was like you didn't do anything i'm canadian He's i very apologize canadian. for things <laughs> hold, hold the door <laughs> open let somebody else through and say sorry sorry <laughs> <laughs> um so when you're looking at your base config for your stepper drivers if you are in uart which uh this example it could go either way but i turned uart on so this would be using a stepper that is not like 
the standard board Creality um, steppers, those ones aren't in UART. So just yeah, they're so standalone. This one is in UART because I wanted to undarken, uncomment, or whatever, reveal, whatever you want to call it, this section here so we could see it better. Um, so if your steppers are in UART, you UART, you, tart, <laughs> you can um, set your micro steps via the software, which is great. Um, funny story about this in a minute, but uh, the, the one that I really want to talk about is the current, the stepper current. And we kind of touched on it. There is a calculation yep. you can do, um, which is really fun. You can take the working amperage of your stepper driver and do some math to figure out what the VREF current should be on your stepper motor and um, for sure you can the thing is is we've used the same stepper drivers for like a million years so it's pretty easy to know what to say those voltages should be so yeah, on an I, and three, I, I i think if you if you buy a high-end stepper from another manufacturer or you get maybe a what is it a 0.9 instead of the 1.8 which is what yeah, we use yeah um then it might be a little different but other than that i think you're 100 percent right yeah it might be a touch different but like the idea for your stepper drivers is to give them just enough voltage that they're slightly over that when they need to torque they can but you don't want to give it so much that they're too much over that they overheat and like burn out or um reality yeah hashtag reality uh, or break your board so the default settings in um uh, or in Marlin, wow, brain work today, good, um, is 800 around the board. So you can see 800, 800, 800, 800, 800. Now, this is actually probably pretty close to not hurting your board, but um, usually what I like to do uh, for my steppers X, Y, and Z is closer to like the 600, and then the extruder will be around the 680. Um, the extruder needs enough torque because it's the thing that's like pushing filament through the nozzle. So right. it, it needs a little more than the others. The other one that you could argue would need a little more um, current so is the Y. Is the y. Uh, yeah. On an Ender 3, though? No. Uh, no. <laughs> but but if, if you're, if like I have, for example, on the Chiron, I have a bigger stepper driver. Like it's it's not an EVA 17. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in that case, I think that one's running around 900, maybe a little more. Yeah. Um, because it has to, because it needs the extra torque just to move itself, <laughs> let yeah. alone the huge bed that it has to push. Yeah. Right. And so like, um, like when you get into like, I'd even, oops, sorry. Yeah, here's snipping tool. I'd even call, um, I'd even call like a, the uh, CR10S size big enough to warrant more current on the mm -hmm. bed. Just because as the bed gets a little bit higher, you're going to actually start to have to deal with like those hard stops and starts of this weighted right. thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so you can set all those in here. You can set the micro steps. If you forget to pull out all the jumpers, your drivers do wonderful things. Um, mine, it was pretty funny. I had an old MKS board that I had forgot to take the jumpers out when I had replaced a 4988 in it. <laughs> so what, specifically what it homed, you'd notice it the most, but it would send the X-axis somewhere into the next room. And you yeah, so, just so, 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 interpolating wrong. <laughs> yeah, so it does the math wrong. So instead of moving it, you know, whatever times 16, yeah, it, it moves does it, it by like 256. Times, yeah, or, or whatever. And so so the movement is very violent and quick. So, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So be, be aware, um, more, most of the modern boards, um, if you're replacing like your Corality board with something else, um, you don't have to really worry about that because you're going to do it through the software setting. Yeah. Um, because most of them are UART. Hopefully you bought Hopefully. a chip that was UART. UART. Yeah, yep. um, but if you're on a Creality board, you're stuck in the, you know, you're not, you're going to be manually step, you know, adjusting it with the, yeah. the pot. So, so. You're, you're opening the board and getting, yeah. I mean, at one point in time, 
the biggest fad I think was to use a um, ceramic screwdriver. Um, now, I know there might be some people screaming at their screen right now, like going, "You have to use a ceramic screwdriver." Um, if you're using a ceramic screwdriver, that's great. I'm not going to tell you to stop. But the reason was is because the ceramic screwdrivers don't conduct um, electricity. <laughs> so if, if, if you, you missed, if you're not if you're not very steady, yeah, you're going to want. And then, like David said, if you miss and you um. Because you have to do this while the printer is on and yep. the stepper is engaged, so you're actually getting voltage. I mean, I suppose you could <laughs> shut it off, turn it, then turn it back on. <laughs> but, but it, honestly, being able to, if you have a metal screwdriver and you have your have it set up right, you can actually turn the voltage and watch the voltage on your meter change yep. while you're turning it. So. It's it's the, it's a nice way to do it though, and if you use a ceramic screwdriver, you can't actually do that way anyway yes. because there's no. So you're turning it and then putting your potentiometer on there. Yeah, metal screwdriver living dangerously. Yeah, like I do. Yeah. I, I mean, but please use mm -hmm. the appropriate size yeah. screwdriver. Don't, don't you don't, like want, to use, you don't, don't, you don't want to use don't want to use like uh, <laughs> the the biggest you know a number three or a number two <laughs> or something like that yes. use something appropriate to fit the 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 pot yeah <laughs> it has to fit the pot um yeah i mean so it's not this is probably the most common way that people accidentally break their motherboards too if you're adjusting the pot and you slip you can short some stuff um the, the other way is to leave the creality board at factory it's true. And then you can just cook it. Um, I will. The only other thing about the potentiometer, and this is outside of Marlin now, but um, remember if you're setting a pot with the screwdriver, you are dealing with uh, live main voltage as well. So oh, when you touch the pot and the ground, you're fine. But if you were to short the, the two that are ground and um, positive together uh, from the power supply, you're going to get a little zapped. Little zappies. I I normally what I do is I I take the ground uh, off the board. Yeah. So then I'm I'm taking 24 volts. Right. No, I'm not going to the mains. Um, so I take I take 24 volts please. or 12 volts, and then so <laughs> either way, um, having having uh, a 24 volt arc through a circuit that's not supposed to have it in that direction would be bad. Yep. So, so be still be careful. And yes, right? Gary, when, no when you're, oh, he got when, it. when you, when you open up any electronics, you know, it's uh, opener beware. You are taking your life into your hands. You have to be aware of what's in there. There are capacitors. There are lots of things. So just be aware. I prefer steak knives. They're pointier. Um, so you can see here <laughs> that um, please don't use steak knives. I guess I should say that out loud. Don't use yeah. steak knives. Yeah, you, can you, see don't want to damage, you don't want to damage your steak knife. Room in the... <laughs> um, no, you don't. Um, but there's room for extra steppers. So if you do have a board that had an extra like uh, Z stepper that you wanted to, to dual chain your Z to a... Uh, an actual stepper not just like a split stepper off of what creality stock boards are or um i mean that's not just that many cubic does it too whenever there's two well, lead rods most people just split right. the stepper and and we and, and we have a video about that and then what you can do with that like the with the g34 yeah. and marlin and, and whatnot, you can see right? that the z stepper comes in a, a three pair in the config if not more four because um Again, we talked about it a little bit, but you can, the more Z lead rods you have, you, the more granularly, granular you can get with the level of the actual bed if it's out mm -hmm. automatically. Yeah. So, um, and it's important to note that like, after you run out of X, Y, Z, you still have I, J, K. Um, and this is for those octopus boards that, that will run many, many steppers. But yeah. in our case, we're just using the first three that were uncommented, and then we use the extruder here. And again, the extruder on this guy, it probably changed to 680. And then if we go back up here, I run these ones at uh, about 560. And again, like this is just from like what my 
This is what I've learned over the years uh, that the steppers like to be driven at. Um, you might have a good reason to drive them higher. Um, if you want to cook an egg or something, that's a great way to. Well, like 1400 uh, an know. egg cooking, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically the, the URTMC. There's SPI, TMC drivers as well, which actually aren't as common anymore as the UR guys, but they're the 2130s, the 60s, um, uh, the 5130s, and the 5160s. So then you can start defining um, which pin they actually use to receive SPI instruction on. Uh, yeah, luck, luckily, we don't typically use the SPI too much anymore, no. thankfully. Uh, the UART has simplified it quite a bit. It, it really has. It's it's made it so that um, you can... You can like just take and plop a driver in almost. And if you... And I'm going to show you another um, section in Marlin here in a second. Uh, that you should have enabled to make your life easier. Easier. Um, Stig says he's got his set around 450, and that's probably just fine for an ender. Again, the Y might be a little low at that, but hey. Um, so, TMC drivers generally have two stepping modes. Uh, what is it? Stealth, stealth chop, and spread cycle. The both yes. modes are on the screen. Um, one's louder than the other. <laughs> And what is the difference, David? Um, honestly, the biggest difference between the two stepping modes is the amount of torque it can uh, apply to the driver. So yeah. if you're high speed printing, like high, high speed printing, you're probably going to end up using spread cycle. And and there is a noticeable audible difference oh, between yes. the two. They squeal. So 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 if you if you want a classic retro sounding printer um then don't use stealth job yeah and so <laughs> you can see yeah you, you don't get rid of it but if you so there's a couple different things here um and then we'll i'll go through them but you probably want to make sure <laughs> if you're not sure where a section is like so if has stealth chop is enabled which means that that's an option somewhere so like if i look in here it's not in there either right which means it's an option that gets an enabled in the library files behind so you could search the project if you were curious as to why I, I, this was yeah enabled. i think i think if any of if you enable in the the configuration h any of those drivers mm -hmm. then it has self job <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if true. if it's not in standalone mode for example right um, and so, yeah, but they'll be in the project folder. So if you wanted to search the project folder, you can. Um, but generally speaking, like these are probably in the library and then mm -hmm, could be pins, could be um, modules. I'd have to like actually search it, but just know that it enables it in the background for you. That's that's the long short of it. Now there's a. Uh, this use drivers that don't use dedicated enable pin um again we're using uart not pin dedication so we don't need to really define that up there this one's an interesting one because most people miss it so the chopper timing is based off of voltage and the ender 3 runs boop boop 24 volts yep so right. you have to go and actually change that you well you can just modify it. Yeah, you just modify you just that one. You just modify it. You don't have to. Boop, 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 not 241. No. And so then it was. And here's the. If you're ever wondering what the acceptable parameters are, they're up here. Um, yeah. So then you can just grab that. We don't need to worry about setting the ones underneath, actually, because they're good. Um, I like to do this. I will. I'll, I'll, when, it, when it comes to command and control with G code, your boards, and we talked about it last week, your boards have ample room nowadays to just enable options. But back in the before times, in the way back, you had to actually like limit what options you would enable. But motor, motor driver status is a, is a good one. Um, and you can see as soon as I do it, it lets me step down. Um, in the menu. So this is actually going to clear some G code for me that I can actually send. So if you're wondering um, what G code, 
here G code. <laughs> now we have to turn one thing on up here and it is this, this TMC debug. So we're just going to copy. Very nice feature to, to have. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to come back to this because there's one right underneath this section that if you enable this, you're going to be asking why is my printer still loud? And that is the define hybrid threshold. Mm -hmm. So hybrid threshold is designed so that your printer can run in both spread cycle and stealth chop when it has to. Um, so you can see, uh, in the section here that if I were to go over a hundred, so a hundred millimeters a second is the threshold. So if during travel or printing or homing, my X, uh, X and Y axis were to go over 100 millimeters per second, and they set all of the X, Y steppers that way, uh, it will change over from the lower version of the stepping to the higher version. Um, yeah. And so you can and it, see- And it becomes audibly louder. Yes, and stealth, so you have stealth chop, and it, it does warn you that stealth chop has to be enabled to use hybrid threshold. So if you weren't sure that you do, had done this before, you could grab this and then go back up and, and look to see if you enabled stealth chop up here, which, which you did, because it says has stealth chop. So you can follow back and you notice that I didn't actually like, um, use the search function in VS code. You can just highlight the word and then it'll find the similar word. <laughs> so if you're close in sections, you can just highlight and drag back and forth without actually worrying about, uh, um, search and find, but the hybrid threshold is set at a hundred. Is it, is it a useful function? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you're Absolutely. printing on your desk at home, like if you're by your printer is going to drive you nuts because you're going to hear the, the pitch of the motor change and then actually hear some of the movements. Now, by no means are these louder than a four, nine, eight, eight. They're still quieter and higher no. threshold. It's yeah. just, you hear them again. Whereas yeah. like we're used to just hearing, um, fan Fans. noise. So it's again, hybrid threshold is a good feature. Uh, Gary, uh, it's just, you're going to switch between the loud and the quiet. So if your printer's doing really, really fast moves, um, it'll kick in because then it can actually torque better. Um, in fact, some of the, um, Mm, closed loop steppers depend on it depending on which and, brand you buy and so. stig stig said if you're printing close to the threshold it could drive you mad and it could yeah. so that's why you could actually change the threshold here so like yeah, if you if print you, at at you know 120 all the time you could make it 160 and often too, right? your print speeds are like let's say we print at like 80 in prusa slicer or kira your print speeds might below be below that, but your travel speeds are usually way above that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, 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 so like print and then. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And so like, if you have at the end homing move or something that, yeah. that when it goes to park itself or whatever, um, do it really fast or something. Well then, yeah, you may want to tweak these. So, um, now we're going to remember we're on line 3108 and we'll probably forget that, but I wanted to go to the TMC debug. We found that in the last section and I copied and pasted it. Remember I copied it. It was right uh, 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 there. <laughs> okay. And so it's just right underneath this section, but we want to turn debug on. So this, uh, first I'll uncomment it and then it'll tell us what it does. So it says, uh, enabling this will enable. 122 which and, gives and this you is driver feedback this, this is one of those features that now that we have more memory available in our printers um turning it on isn't going to drastically change your usage of your printer whereas you yep. know in the old days we had to really watch what features we turned on <laughs> and off Back this is not one of days. them anymore yeah, it's like three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the TMC bug feature is great because it lets you see what the current is, what the operating status of the stepper is. So this actually helps you like um, troubleshoot those issues where like, hey, why my extruder's not moving? What's going on? You could look in the debug mode and actually see that there's no current going or something, you know. Uh, yeah, something or it's not like seeing that. the driver at all. Yeah. Right. And so then you can actually narrow things down quicker than taking the whole thing apart. I'm just going to go up here so you guys can see this section. 
Um, now the 2209s and the 226, two, two, I yeah. believe they're called. They're the same. Um, they do have centralist homing pins. So if you choose to use centralist homing instead of end stops, and, and um, we'll come back to that in two seconds here, um, you can turn on centralist homing. Stall guard is the technology that actually drives that but basically what happens is when the motor detects resistance it assumes it's at the end of something and then it says okay i'm here and then and, it, and it lets you home and, <laughs> and printers and i had this set up on my anet a8 with uh 2130s mm -hmm. and it worked most of the time well, actually i mean the 2130s um, were the f except when they overheated version. yeah that's yeah the and they and then that's <laughs> uh, and then then they'd randomly Just crash to the and, side and stuff yeah but um prusa for example um they use i think was it tw tw 26 tens or something i can't remember what model of uh, driver there. that they use anyway they've used sensorless homing on the mk3 and now four and and I think even back to the two, um, forever. Yep. Um, that's how they level the gantry against the top, and that's how they move around. They they use sensorless for everything. So, so sensorless again, it's one of those things. If you have it, it's a great feature. But like, here's the thing: if you're upgrading a board or you know moving uh, just stepper drivers, there's a good chance you already have mechanical switches there. In which case, I wouldn't move. <laughs> just keep your mechanical yeah. switches um like if you're there was designing a, a printer from scratch and you don't yeah. feel like spending extra money on switches we could use yeah, you yeah. totally use it. extra money on switches the whole 30 cents right 30 cents <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot when but you're printing a, since this homing <laughs> does work um there was a lot of trial and error um when it first came out to see if it could do bed probing which we're coming up to as well um but it the answer was a resounding meh with bed probing yeah. because it's not sensitive enough to stop the probe or the probing against the nozzle head fast enough. With and, the and that's why they've gone to like anywhere from uh, strain sensors now yeah. to um, well, I mean, BL to touch is still around. BL touch to uh, other various types of probes, right? So this option does exist. You can turn it on. Um, the sensitivity factor, however, is something you have to play with. So yeah, it's 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 an art. Yes. So you turn it on, and then if you like how it works, great. If you hate it, you come back in here, and you can uh, adjust the sensitivity. Now, there is G-code behind that as well, and I don't believe you actually have to turn it on separately. Um, blah, 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 blah. Nope. It's just right there. So as soon as no, you enable it, this, uh, yeah. if you enable sensorless homing, um, 914 works. And you can actually set the sensitivity on the yeah, fly. So yeah, and it's it's recompile. it's you know you you start at zero and go up, right? And then you have to find the number between zero and two fifty five that um, adequately notes that <laughs> it has reached the end of your gantry and crashed basically. It, yeah, <laughs> this, this is the end. All right, so um, we've talked about. Um, our trinamic sections, uh, we've talked about stealth shop. We do have to do, an, we've, we actually have a video on advanced pause. <laughs> so we have a, a separate video on advanced pause, but we're going to talk about that really quick today. It's, and then it's a great feature. I love the feature. You auto fans. This is one that you do require not a Creality stock board for, um, the stock board can't do auto fans except one so yeah you you need a board that has the pwm feature for yeah. um more than just one fan for so, example like the skr so you could do it with an skr 1.342 um the um you could use the all if you had um, three does it an e e e1 uh heater you yep. could you could bypass and reassign those pins to be able to do auto fan and there's lot lot there was lots of ways on the some of the older boards to yeah. do it but now they have uh, so many boards have multiple pwm fan choices mm -hmm. so i'm going to pop this in is here much more flexible and we're going to look for the word fan um we could actually look for the word 
auto. Except you have to spell auto, right? Fan, since it's an underscore. And here we are in the section of auto fan. Um, if you guys remember, um, or if you watched, it might have been a while. I don't know. If you haven't watched the video on the E3 Turbo Board, go watch it for one. But two, um, we utilized auto fans in that config. So basically what happens is this tells the fan that matches the pin that says, hey, if you're, um, if this hot end turns on, turn the fan on. Well, at, at a certain temperature. No, yes, at a temperature. But, um, and then you set the temperature underneath. That's why we didn't get the, anyway. Um, and then you can actually set the, um, speed of the fan so this is what i did on one of my enders because the fan was terribly loud even after adjusting the uh auto fan setting so then i said don't let the fan spin faster than 100 uh so then that's about half speed and then it quiets it right, right down be careful um <laughs> uh, because if you're using that for your uh, hot end so um let's uh, uh let's go in and i want to show you so remember we've got two fans we have the part cooling fan and then we have the hot end fan and and like david was alluding to if you turn the speed of the hot end fan down too much yep you could get some heat creep and then you could get jamming so be aware um i like to leave it at the full speed while i'm printing personally and then uh, when it drops below 50 because it's you know done printing my fans shut off and my printer's nice and quiet sitting beside me the rest of the day kind of thing i definitely forgot what drivers in this board it's it's is not it the, the maple is it the re it's, though yes it's the r c no re yeah up at the top let's just pick that one so then you can come down and then you can look at the STMF, and it's an STMF 32F1. Boop. And then you can look at, here's all the boards. So if you find yours in the list here, uh, which is the Creality 422, boom. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I think you have to go to the main Creality 4 one, because it references. Well, I know, but I was just showing that. Because you can see here, right here, Greg, Greg's saying it right now. He's ruining my surprise. Greg. just kidding but it tells you where it includes so there's nothing in here except a thing that says look at the pins creality four board so then yeah. we can go pins and then is it in here or is it in the other one there so it's, it it's at the top of the list there so yeah. then you can chase it down look here's a pins so the pins tell you what um uh and then see it tells you first off which boards this applies to so actually a lot um but then you can find all your pins your your names for your fans your servos your switches your sensors your steppers and a partridge if, in a pear tree if the board had uart it would tell you in here yeah um if if like he's getting down to the lcd pin out and it, it tells you a lot about your board so if you need to reassign a pin for some reason um this is where you find out what the original pin was. Um, yeah, PWM um, in our world just means controllable via software. It changes the modulation of the actual electric current as the requirements change. So it's what's let you change pulse the width pulse modulation. Pulse modulation. modulation. Yeah, modulation. Um, anyway, here's the pin. So you can see here that the fan pin in this case is very limited. We have one fan pin that's PA0. So we can go yeah. here. We could copy this. We know this one's for the hot end. Um, so we actually know that's that's oh. a lie. This is the part cooling fan. Yeah, so you can't so on you don't the wanna, 422 board, yeah. you, you would not be able to. That's the only fan that is variable yeah so if you, you went to a big tree feature. Board, yeah. um and there is a creality board that has 
too, but I forget which yeah. model. Yeah, it was. but but let's say you replaced it with like the E three turbo or the E three whatever, you would have a, another pin available to adjust mm -hmm. your, your. And so that's where you'd find them. And if they're not in here, then you can define them as custom, um, and your board layout will tell you. So you'd have to like open. For example, you'd have to open your browser, and then you'd have to go. You'd have to like SKR 1.4 pin out <laughs> and then you could, okay, there's a pin out and we go through this too in the, in the video, but you can then see like, okay, well, here's my pin outs and this and this, and then you can see what they're called. And then you can actually like map, map the pin outs to what you want. So you can get a good idea as to what the fan pins are, what, what the actual, so like there's a fan header here right and it gives you fan fan and it's called fan zero fan one that's the actual pin and names. and you and you can see there's it says 2.3 right mm -hmm. that that means you that's can the number that you one's can adjustable assign. but if you look at fan one it's it just 12, says 12 12 24 so that means it's that you cannot pwm you can't adjust the fan speed yep. and also the fan three up at, on top also you can't adjust it yeah so um, so but the, the nice e3 part. turbo you or the e3 v3 um you have i think three adjustable fans it could be i don't know but like on this board there is more options for adjustable fans because you do you do have this which is not used so like you can use the e1 port for an adjustable fan um on the e3 turbo look at the e3 v3 here's the because turbo that's the, yeah that's there's the one three there. controllable fans but at any rate i'm not worried about the actual um yep the actual thing i'm just showing you that if you need to change a pin you have to find a pin out and then you can decide what you want to do with that pinout after and we and, go through and, that in this video so like yeah. in the big tree techie three video you can check it out um to more detail as it were so um boop boop back here so you can use this section is really fun um in the video we use the chamber fan also um the e3 turbo has a extra thermistor on the board um if you have the if you have another like greg said the the newest skr and i think the two and the 1.4 have enough thermistors ends on it so that you could just pop another thermistor on it and then you can put it inside the box or in a chamber i use mine to control my con uh i use mine to control the control box fan <laughs> yeah if it, yeah so, so there, there's a number of cool um things you could you can utilize right yep so. so that's the fan section it exists you can do a lot with it you can cheat with it a lot if you think outside the box you can do things that you shouldn't do like <clears throat> let's say you wanted to turn lights on in the chamber when the printer got high hotter this is how you could accomplish it <laughs> um so there's a lot like because although it says fan this is a pwm controllable threshold so you can definitely do more than just one. So if there's like other automation you wanted to happen with your printer, you can do well, it. There, and there's a whole LED light section, which mm -hmm. we're not going to go into. No, we you don't. Can, no. You can you can have different colors at different states of printing. If it's heating up, it's red. If it's printing, it's green. If it's successfully printed, it's when another color, right? Grumpy, it's purple. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, so you, you can do funky stuff but that's beyond the scope of our 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 well at least this today. this part anyway um so the last thing we're gonna do is advanced pause you cannot search enable advanced pause it just doesn't work but there is an advanced pause section so you search advanced pause in advanced and then you can see here it says advanced pause yada 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 we talked about m600 in a video um, this feature is, it requires a filament runout sensor script, um, which, <clears throat> spoiler alert, requires a filament runout sensor. <laughs> but, but you can turn it on without having a filament. You can. Sensor. So it doesn't do the smart. 
right now, but it will do the advanced change. So like there's two ways to use it. One's triggering the M600 G code, and then it'll go through the, um, it'll, it'll go through the routine once it hits M600, or you can have it on, like Greg said, you know, you can have it on the, the front out switch and then it does it. All of these are great. This is so good. So it says park, retract, I, feed length. I you use can. it all the time. Yeah. I mostly leave the defaults. The defaults work really, really good. Um, they can be a little bit wasteful from the aspect of time and filament, but we're talking like maybe 3% of your print time could be taken up by yeah. the, so like, that's great. If you go to configuration and, uh, you, I don't, you won't find this, this, like this pause allows, deploy. this allows for poor man's multicolor printing. It does. And then you can actually use, um, you can actually use the, um, man, the words aren't coming to my brain. Pause that layer height. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, when you look up N600, you can see these commands don't run. And then it has like a, the filament runout sensor is in your, it's so weird. I've never understood this, but the filament runout sensor is defined in configuration.h away from M600. So if you wanted to use your filament runout sensor, you come back to configuration.h. Um, and you can see, I found that just by typing in M600 to get to the right section. Um, again, the default sensors our default settings for off the shelf sensors are fine. Um, if you made your own, you might have to know whether the sensor switch is normally open or closed for that and, logic. And sometimes, sometimes it's just the way you soldered it. Right. Yeah. Too, Cause some switches you can do either. And we'll talk more about like this setup when we, um, get to the offline point with the and Discord I, guys. I honestly, I rarely use my filament runout sensor, but well, all of mine have filament stuck in them. <laughs> <clears throat> but if, if you are doing like a huge print and you do yes. have, um, um, you know, you're going like, for example, on my CR 10, when I was doing my Mando helmet, um, mm -hmm. I did utilize that just because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough on the spool. So it's nice for it to park itself, keep the bed warm. So your print doesn't pop off <laughs> yep. Yep. and, and, uh, and then be able to switch your filament and continue on. So, so there are use cases, um, on, on an ender. Eh. Yeah. And like I do, I have used it again. Like Greg said, I have used it on my ender. I'm going to show you guys the biggest problem with filament runout sensors right now. So this is uh, just a micro switch. I Googled the word micro switch and I got the DigiKey one. Um, so you, this is akin to the switch that's in lots of the stock filament runout sensors. Very similar. Yeah. And you can see this right here, this part. All right. Click on it. This right here. So that the ball, the wheel, um, it turns and it rolls as a wheel should. However, it also wears out like a wheel should. So what happens is, is over time it gets a groove in the top of that wheel. And then eventually it, it wears away enough that the filament actually doesn't trigger the sensor anymore. So then it always thinks it's empty. The, um, the, and the other failure is inside the, the switch itself. Mm -hmm. There yeah. is, is just a little tiny thin piece of metal it's that like right deforms. There. Right. It can bend. And so, yeah. so at, over time, you know, what happens when you bend metal back and forth, back and forth? It's Nothing lots. but bad, you know, just good. Yeah, things. It eventually snaps. Right. So, <laughs> so, um, they can break and they're, ver they're relatively cheap. Like David says, yeah, they're, like you know, like 30 cents a five bucks, depending on the where problem, you want to buy them. <laughs> the problem with them is, is, um, so like if you have an any cubic product, um, with a, with a switch or a, a sorry, a, and filament stop in it, um, the runout sensor, uh, you can't open it nicely to change that switch. So you're going to break it in half to get into it. And then you can put, put the thing in and you put duct or a electrical tape around it to hold it back together. Um, there are other options. So there are smart filament, um, runout sensors. 
um, I forget the one brand. Big Tree Tech had one. It's a yeah, rotary there's, sensor. There's, and they, yeah, they they um, look at you know everything from pressure, whether it's moving. Like there's there's a lot more. Prusa had the optical one um, that they had they've, to get rid of. <laughs> and they've they've actually gone back to uh, a man manual one with a ball and a magnet. Yep. Um, and they are thinking of implementing in the MK4 the they have a, a strain gauge built in mm -hmm. and so they could actually utilize that because they get all the data from the strain gauge as it's printing and the filament's pushing through so they could detect if if there's too much back pressure so they have the data but they haven't implemented it yet so yeah so and that's something that they could put in there you know? yeah and like Ray, Ray's kind of uh, just going back through chat, just back to the fan. I think like the Ray's illustrated the best use for the auto fan. Uh, so yeah, mine's the same. It's 50, the fan, 50 C, the fan comes on, 50 C, the fan goes off uh, on my E3 Mine as well. The controller fan doesn't spin up until it's over 30 degrees and then it shuts off under 30. So like my printers are very um, quiet that way. Um, Spool 3D also sells, <laughs> hashtag not sponsored, but Spool 3D is also a reseller of Orion fans, which are a 24 volt silent fan. And so, micro switches to yeah. replace your broken <laughs> But so the fan works really well in conjunction because you can't hear those fans. They're just amazing. Um, so that's the filament runout sensors. That's kind of the problem with the filament runout sensors, but they're not hard. now. Um, we should, we should probably save, yes, uh, I, I leveling could. and whatnot for next week. Yeah. We'll so we're going to, cause fin that one's fairly involved. It is. So we're going to finish our Marlin next week for sure. Probably in the first 20 minutes and then we'll move on to Clipper guys. Um, we, we say that now at 45 minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Well, like when you think about it, we only had, we only had 40 minutes, right? I mean, there's not a lot of time. It's. It's it's a, it's time though it's time right but um, uh, yeah no I mean there's you can see how um, Marlin could be or any any coding or ch a configuring of of uh, of com to get ready to compile code could be overwhelming for someone who's never done it before yeah. because there are a lot of lot of moving pieces right uh, no yeah. pun intended we got robots that we want to move but you know it's mm -hmm. one of those things like it's it can't I, I know i was intimidated the first time that i saw it and david's like oh just configure it yourself i'm like yeah, what? Just, just <laughs> you can do it um and now now i've done it like hundreds of times and it's it's it is it's, easy it is it's relatively easy um there's a few comments yes it's ball bearing super quiet uh gary the orion fives um so light activated filament runout sensors they've existed and Prusa was actually using one for a while too problem is is <clears throat> clear filament that's true any, any translucent filament didn't work great with them so if you use that that would be a use case not to use one of those and then the other comment was what about like an encoder wheel like on your mouse and that's actually what's inside the uh smart filament runout sensor from big tree tech <laughs> so yeah that exists it works okay um those ones are interesting because like uh, i think greg mentioned but like um since it's using an encoder wheel it can count how much filament it's used too so it, it can give you like a an actual Filament and how and fast the and, filament is going through too and it can give like an estimate of when you're running out and they're cool yeah. do greg and i use them no no <laughs> <laughs> but they're cool um can you add 101 gadgets to sure anything can. you do yeah. yeah it's like it's like having a kitchen do you need a air fryer and a pr uh, pressure cooker and and something else and a special whisk to do certain type of things you mm -hmm, could mm -hmm. Or you could use a fork. <laughs> but yeah, so like when you're thinking about switches for, uh, like honestly, in my mind, the best switch for a filament runout sensor is a Hall Effect. So something very similar to the way the magnets work in the BL Touch. You just cross it across the filament, and then when it runs out, it, it can drop that ball bearing onto the switch, and then it's like, oh, it's gone. Yeah. I know it's so there, there's I mean, but. there's there's tons of different approaches. Um do they all work? Yep. Do some work better than others? Yep. Um, are we going to say that one is better than all the rest? Nope. 
<laughs> oh, I will. Let's throw this down. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, no, great discussions. Um, hey, maybe we have a build off on who can build the best filament runout sensor. Who's in? Ooh, that'd be cool. Who can make the best one? You don't actually have to print it or make it, but who can design it in CAD and see what we uh, what we can come up with in Discord? Yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Um, so, so hopefully, um, David and I will work out some details on the Maker Fair stuff that, uh, um, so that if anyone is uh, going to be around that that Saturday, uh, we can try to coordinate something. So yep. we'll work out the details and we can announce that next week. Yep, absolutely. So. Um, and uh, I'm going to push the button. I want to say thank you to the Patreons, Hell's at the top, everybody else on the list here. You make the wheels go around here. We appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you for being Patreons. And uh, if you want to join us on Patreon, uh, Patreon, it's patreon.com slash 3D make it. Uh, we've got the Discord running and some other. We have uh, Patreon only chats. I guess we're going to do our Patreon chat next week, guys, um, for this month, which is two days. No, it's still this month. Ha! Next week. Patreon yeah, we, chat. we, we, well, well, let, next week we got to finish up Marlin, so we could do it maybe the week after. Steve can keep us on topic, though. He can whip us while we're doing it. Um, but again, <laughs> he always you for does. Being Patreons. <laughs> if you want to check out the Discord, that's how you get on it. Is patreoncom slash Make it. Um, if you want the rest of the socials, it's uh, www.3dmakeit.ca. Uh, yeah. But yeah, until next week, kids. It's been fun. Bye. Bye.